Go ahead, Karate speaking. And as you can see, Soyuz TMA 08N has now landed. It was at 10.58 p.m. Central Time. Thank you, Prussian Guys, Super Moscow. On Space to Ground 1. Rafael, go ahead, please. Good evening to our listening and viewing audience around the world. Uh, I don't know if you've had live TV from the landing site yet. You'll probably be getting that shortly. Soyuz Commander Pavel Vinogradov, the oldest human ever to land in a Soyuz vehicle at the age of 60, is uh, sitting very comfortably in one of the three reclining chairs just outside of the Soyuz spacecraft, which landed on its side on this still and sunny Wednesday morning on the southern steppe of Kazakhstan. Uh, the uh, Energia technicians and the search and recovery forces uh, who arrived within literally seconds of the touchdown of the Soyuz TMA-08M spacecraft are in the process of uh, extracting Chris Cassidy and Alexander Mazurkin as well. They will be placed in those reclining chairs flanking Pavel Vinogradov just a few minutes from now. We'll stay on with you through the extraction of the crew, and then after a few minutes uh, to get their land legs, as it were, They'll be uh, hoisted on those reclining chairs and uh, brought into a nearby inflatable medical tent uh, to begin some unique pilot field tests, as they are called. These are tests uh, that are designed to add to a database uh, for not only uh, the one-year crew, Scott Kelly and Mikhail Kornienko, uh, when they return from their year-long uh, sojourn on board the International Space Station in March of 2016, but also for interplanetary travel as well. Uh, these tests will include uh, Cassidy and Mazurkin, who will be attended uh, by NASA and uh, Institute of Biomedical Problems personnel, uh, taking data on their ability to, unassisted, uh, move to a standing position from a sitting position, then from a prone position to a standing position, and then a heel-to-toe walk on an unassisted basis. All and, of Rob, that just so you know, we are seeing live video now, and I uh, can tell that uh, Cassidy as well as Vinogradov are both out of the capsule. It looks like everything's going pretty smoothly. Indeed, uh, absolutely smoothly and very efficiently. So the final member of the Expedition 36 crew is now uh, being gently uh, pulled out of uh, the top hatch of the Soyuz spacecraft, which again uh, landed on its side uh, here on the steppe of Kazakhstan, and Mazurkin is now out of the Soyuz, and he'll be placed in his uh, his reclining seat, his comfortable uh, pseudo chaise lounge, if you will, and uh, have an opportunity to uh, get his land legs for a few minutes. Uh, he, again, one of the two subjects of these unique pilot field tests that will be conducted inside the medical tent in the minutes ahead. Once in the medical tent, uh, they'll... Uh, uh, be assisted in the removal of their Sokol launch and entry suits uh, before uh, they undergo uh, the first initial battery of normal, regular, standard uh, biomedical tests. Uh, and then on to the pilot field test that we discussed a few minutes ago, uh, the three sets of tests that will begin to acquire data. Uh, these are tests that are expected to be conducted uh, after every landing on at least uh, uh, the U.S. crew member and uh, one of the Russian crew members uh, that will fly on any respective Soyuz vehicle uh, to gather data that will be valuable initially uh, when Scott Kelly and Mikhail Kyle Karnienko returned from the International Space Station in March of 2016 after one year in space.
of all three crew members now safely out of the Soyuz capsule, the TMA-08M, which landed right on time at 9.58 p.m. Central Time or uh, 8.58 a.m. Kazakhstan Time. Hold it. And uh, the crew members now being carried to a medical tent to uh, undergo not only the, the normal medical tests that all crew members go through after returning from space, but also some additional tests that are going to uh, help us build a baseline of data on uh, crew members returning from uh, extended stays in space.